Welcome, brave listeners. Brace yourselves as we embark on a journey through corridors of darkness and mystery. Tonight, we delve into four true spine-chilling tales that will send shivers down your spine and quicken your heartbeats from the silent corners of one's home to the faint whispers in the midst of solitude. Each story is a real-life experience shared by those courageous enough to recount them. In quiet desperation, they share their isolated moments of terror when they found themselves home alone. Prepare yourself for what you are about to hear may forever change the way you perceive being alone. Let's begin this eerie voyage. The only person aware of this incident is my best friend. I've kept it secret due to the embarrassment it causes me. It all unfolded last January when I was 16. As a girl who caught a severe flu, I was homebound from school. My family, without boasting, is quite well off. Living in a sizable house with an ensuite bathroom in my room, which is relevant to this story. It was a Wednesday, my parents were at work, and I'd been sick since Sunday, feeling absolutely miserable. Due to my condition, my parents had forgotten to inform me that our fire alarms were scheduled for maintenance. Our home, being quite large, is equipped with five alarms a number that may seem excessive, but is necessary and even legally required in our country. The technician checking the alarms was someone I've known since childhood, which perhaps contributed to my parents' oversight. As I lay there, ill and unaware, the day unfolded with an unexpected turn that I would never forget. Indeed, it slipped my parents' minds to mention that Bob, an acquaintance since childhood, would be visiting to check our fire alarms. Around 11 a.m., feeling quite under the weather and bedridden, I sought a moment of personal solace, thinking it might alleviate the relentless headache from my illness. The house was silent, and my door was slightly open but I figured it didn't matter since I believed I was alone. However, as I returned to reality, I was paralyzed with shock to find Bob standing at my doorway, a disturbing grin on his face. Panic surged through me as I realized the vulnerability of my situation. His presence became more alarming when I noticed his inappropriate gesture. He spoke in a low, unsettling voice claiming he was just there to check the alarms, but the implications were clear. In a swift motion of fear and self-preservation, I grabbed my duvet and rushed into the attached bathroom, locking myself in. There, wrapped in my duvet and feeling a mix of fear and shame, I broke down. Despite understanding it wasn't my fault, I felt violated and scared. Hours seemed to pass before I dared to leave the bathroom. I immediately confided in my best friend, who was as shocked as I was and suggested I tell my parents, but the weight of embarrassment and fear of misunderstanding kept me silent, except to her. That day lingers in my mind, a blend of emotions still raw, but by sharing this story, I hope to reach out to others who faced similar situations to remind them that they're not alone and that the blame is never theirs to bear. Despite knowing I did nothing wrong, the way Bob looked at me, clearly aroused and possibly watching me for who knows how long, still makes me sick. I was terrified, trapped in the bathroom fearing he might try something more. It was a horrifying realization that someone who had known me since I was a toddler could look at me in such a way. With a fire alarm near my bedroom door, I didn't know if he had checked the others yet or how long he'd stay. 
phoneless, and feeling utterly alone. I was paralyzed with the thought of confronting my parents about this embarrassing and terrifying situation. I stayed in the bathroom for hours, comforted only by the proximity to the toilet. Eventually, I gathered enough courage to leave, clutching razors for protection. I flung open the door, prepared to defend myself, but Bob was gone. The silence of the house didn't reassure me. I swiftly grabbed my phone and locked myself in the bathroom again, waiting anxiously for my dad's return. When my dad finally arrived, he found it odd that I was wrapped in my duvet, but accepted my quick explanation about feeling cold from the flu. I had just enough time to concoct a plausible story. When my dad mentioned Bob had been by, I didn't reveal the true horror of what had occurred. I simply agreed and hurried to shower, promising to join them later if I felt better. As the hours passed and my mom returned, I kept the ordeal to myself, the weight of what had happened, the fear and the shame was mine alone to bear. I realized that some experiences are too difficult to share. Even with those closest to us, months after the incident, I finally opened up to my best friend about what had happened. She was horrified and urged me to speak up about Bob's inappropriate behavior, but I just couldn't. Instead, I resolved to avoid him at all costs. As January nears and Bob's scheduled to check the fire alarms again, I've made plans to ensure I'm not home when he arrives. The thought of leaving for college and never having to see Bob again brings me some comfort. But the embarrassment and fear from that day still haunt me. I'm more cautious now, always double-checking locks when I'm home alone. Back when I was 14, sick with the norovirus and home alone, I remember watching mundane daytime TV to pass the time. My mom, working long hours, couldn't be there, so I was left to my own devices. One day, feeling slightly better, I dared to eat something. Just as I was settling back in bed with my snack, I heard what I thought was my phone. I checked, but there were no notifications. Dismissing it as my imagination, I continued my day, not realizing the eerie quietness that would lead to another unsettling experience. Determined not to succumb to another bout of sickness, I was startled again by the sound of a phone. It definitely wasn't mine. Now thoroughly unnerved, I cautiously approached my bedroom window and peered out. The street was empty, not a soul in sight, which was strange considering the noise seemed so close. With a growing sense of unease, I wandered into the hallway, scanning for anything amiss. Everything seemed normal, yet the mysterious phone sound was unmistakably nearby. Drawn by a strange compulsion, I entered the bathroom and found myself looking up at the attic entrance. It was securely shut, but a faint, erratic flashing caught my eye. It resembled the beam of a flashlight wandering in the dark, an unsettling sight that churned my stomach further. Confused and feeling a renewed wave of nausea, I retreated to my bedroom, feeling more alone than ever with my friends at school and my mom at work. In desperation, I texted my granddad about the bizarre sounds and the light in the attic. He called immediately, concern lacing his every word as he instructed me to take a photo of the attic. A deep, ominous dread washed over me. And instead, I hastily slipped into my trainers and pajamas and stepped outside. I relayed my fear to him, and he insisted there shouldn't be any light in the attic, urging me to come to his house. Though I felt ill and hesitant, his tone conveyed urgency. I found myself at the back door, ready to flee to the safety of the garden. 
Hearing him call out to my gran, announcing his imminent arrival, was the only comfort. My grandparents lived just a street away, a small distance that felt like miles in that moment. I waited, poised between the safety of my home and the uncertainty outside, as my granddad made his way to unravel the mystery of the unexplained noises and the light in the attic. While waiting on the phone with my granddad, he instructed me to stay put in the kitchen as he made his way upstairs. However, he was back down in a flash, a look of urgency on his face. He told me not to panic, but we needed to leave immediately. Handing me his coat, he ushered me out the door. My heart raced, and the stress got to me, leading me to become sick right there on the street. But my granddad was there, comforting me as he dialed the police. In what felt like a whirlwind, my granddad explained that when he saw the light upstairs, he knew it was from a phone and sensed something was terribly wrong. His instinct was right. The police found a young man, no older than 25, hiding in our attic. The intruder had been there for days, unbeknownst to us, using his phone to light up the dark space. He'd been texting a friend, plotting further intrusion, all while living right above us, using our resources like food and the bathroom. The discovery sent shockwaves through me. It was almost unfathomable how we had been so oblivious, especially in our seemingly safe neighborhood where we seldom locked our doors. The realization that someone could invade our personal space so easily was deeply unsettling. After that day, we became diligent about security, a lesson learned in the most disturbing way. My granddad's quick thinking and protective instincts were the only solace in the chaos of that terrifying day. Now, as an adult, I ensure no door remains unlocked a constant reminder of the vulnerability we all can face in our own homes. In a recent unnerving experience, I was enjoying a movie night with a friend, expecting a food delivery from a local Indian restaurant. As we waited in the well-lit living room, a sound at the back door caught our attention. A peculiar occurrence given the clear visibility of our front door and house number. To our surprise, it was the delivery driver at the back gate, an unusual and unsettling choice for delivery. The driver, an overly energetic woman, handed over the food after I navigated my way to the back. We were puzzled, but brushed it off, diving into our meal. However, the night took another strange turn hours later when I spotted a car parked outside, the driver's unmistakable figure visible within. The sight of her, seemingly just sitting there staring ahead, sent chills down our spines. My friend and I debated our next move. Wary of calling the police over something that might seem trivial, yet deeply disturbed by the situation. Resolved not to be intimidated, I confronted the driver tapping on her window. Her reaction was immediate. She appeared shocked, hastily reversing her car and speeding away. We were left shaken. And despite the takeaway's indifferent response when we called to complain, the incident lingered with us. A stark reminder of the unexpected and sometimes bizarre encounters that can disrupt the safety and comfort of home. Now I make sure never to leave any door unlocked, a small but significant measure against the unforeseen. Hearing the takeaway's response, my friend and I couldn't help but feel somewhat dismissed. Though the driver's actions weren't criminal, they were undeniably peculiar, leaving us uneasy about the possibility of her returning. We couldn't fathom her motives for parking outside our house 
or taking such an unusual route for delivery. That night, shaken, we opted to stick together, sleeping in the living room for a semblance of security. After the incident, I've avoided ordering from that place, and generally don't order takeout often. Theories circulated among friends about the driver's strange behavior, suggesting possible substance influence, but nothing could explain her bizarre and unsettling actions. It was a small, yet deeply disconcerting encounter that stayed with us. In a separate incident years ago in New Delhi, India, my sense of home security was again tested. Living in a spacious four-bedroom house with a terrace, I experienced a startling disruption late at night. While browsing the internet, the sudden sound of breaking glass startled me. Initially seeing nothing, the noise persisted, coming from the terrace. Cautiously approaching, I discovered three men there, casually drinking beers. In a mix of fear and indignation, I confronted them, demanding to know their purpose on my property. It was a rash reaction, perhaps, but in the moment, the violation of my home's sanctity demanded some response. The experience underscored the unpredictable nature of such intrusions and the importance of vigilance, even in one's own home. My impulsive confrontation turned perilous as one of the intruders brandished a knife and charged at me. In sheer terror, I bolted downstairs, barricading myself in my room as they pounded relentlessly on the door. The chilling promise of making it less painful, if I complied, echoed through the wood, heightening my fear. I immediately dialed the police, praying for a swift response. It felt like an eternity, but finally, after about 15 minutes, the police arrived. Remarkably, the men were still outside my bedroom, their presence and threatening behavior evident. The officers quickly intervened, their arrival bringing a chaotic but relieving end to the horrifying ordeal. The incident was a stark reminder of the unpredictability of danger and the importance of quick thinking and action in moments of crisis. The police's swift action led to the intruder's arrest, bringing an immediate sense of relief. But the questions of how and why they targeted my terrace lingered, amplifying the fear and confusion. The lack of explanation for their presence and motives left an unsettling mystery at the heart of the experience. Knowing they were incarcerated offered some comfort Yet the details of their fate, or the reasons behind their invasion, remained unknown. The hope that justice would be served was a small solace. But the incident's haunting memory was a reminder of the importance of vigilance and safety in even the most familiar of settings. In reflecting on these unsettling encounters, it's evident that safety and peace of mind are precious yet fragile. The incidents serve as stark reminders of the unpredictability of life and the importance of being vigilant and prepared. As I continue to navigate through the complexities of everyday living, these experiences underscore the value of community, quick thinking, and the protective measures we take to safeguard our homes and loved ones. While the memories may linger and the questions remain, the lessons learned from these harrowing moments fortify my resolve to ensure a secure and vigilant future. Whether it's a mysterious visitor or an unwarranted intrusion, the significance of awareness and preparedness cannot be understated as they are the beacons that guide us through the uncertainty and help maintain the sanctity of our personal spaces.